I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you how to take a small cross stitch pattern that you may have done or embroidery needlepoint and I'll show you how to frame it like this using cloth. You can also use this particular technique to even frame photos if you like. It's real, real easy, so let's get started. Now this is Dimensions cross stitch kit. You can get the entire kit at Walmart, but not all Walmart sell fabric and crafts. And this was just a little under $5. It includes your Ada cloth, your embroidery thread, your needle, everything you need to put this together. So what I'm going to do is just go over a little bit about this kit, then I'm going to show you how to frame it. Now this kit really is for beginners. That's why it's so inexpensive. It's just a small little uh, picture. When it's completely done, it's about five inches across. But I thought it had a really cute saying. So here is your instruction sheet. And down here, it explains which embroidery floss to use. So you come with a certain number of colors. It'll tell you how many strands of thread to use for each of the sections. Also, when I went to do the lettering, when you do a back stitch around your lettering to outline each letter, I didn't use just one strand of floss. I used two because I wanted it to look very bold. I like to take my pattern and take it to my photocopier printer and enlarge it a little bit because then, because my eyesight isn't so great as I've gotten older. So it's just easier for me to read all the symbols so I know what thread to use. And I'll enlarge it and then I use it uh, to highlight those areas when I've completed it. So as I go along, I just take a marking pin, those little highlighters, and highlight those areas. And that way you don't miss any steps that you need to do. Now mine is all done. This is the Ada cloth. And originally the Ada cloth was nine inches square when it comes in the kit. I cut mine down to seven and a half inches. So I have about an inch and a quarter on each side from the uh, where the stitches are out to the edge is about one and a quarter inches. So you want to go ahead and cut it down to that size. When you're done, go to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch around the edges. If you don't have a sewing machine, then just take needle and thread and just go around the edge doing a little whip stitch. And that helps to prevent your Ada cloth from unraveling. I'm using cardboard that's 1 8 inch thick. So you want to use at least that. Don't use too thin of cardboard because then it might bend too much. So cut yours to 8 and a half inches. Then take a ruler and line your one and a half inch line on here and draw a line on this side. Then turn it and one and a half inches in, draw a line. So you want to keep going around to all four edges, drawing a line. Then you want to cut on these lines right here. When you're done, it should look like this. So the width of your frame is about one and a half inches. Before I get started showing you how to make this frame, when you are going to uh, insert this, in, this cross stitch behind your cardboard frame, you're going to have about a half inch of Ada cloth from your cross stitches out to the frame here. So you're always going to try to keep it at that when you're putting all of this together. I'm using cotton fabric, it's quilting fabric, and you want to cut a 10 and a half inch square. And then in the middle, you're going to have a four and a half inch square 
right in here. So how you're going to do that is take a ruler and place the three inch line right on the edge of your fabric. So you're going to go over three inches and draw a line. Then turn your fabric again and go over three inches and draw a line. And you're going to keep doing that till you get all four sides done in three inches, draw a line, and then do it here. So then you'll wind up with a square drawn in here. Then go ahead and cut this square out. This is cotton batting right here. And you just need a small piece. And you want to cut it the same size as your cardboard frame. So you can just take a piece of cotton batting, lay your frame on top, draw around it, and then cut it out. I'm using tacky glue for this next step. So you just put it all over on just one side of your frame and just kind of swirl it around. Then take your cotton batting and place it on that side of the where the glue is and press it all down. Now turn the frame over and place it on top of your fabric. And this is the front side of my fabric and this is the back side. So the cotton batting is going against the fabric. And again, just place it all over the center. And I'm going to move it over just a little bit because it's off center. And there we go. Not bad. Okay, so now you're going to take your corners first of your fabric and bring it over and bring it down. And you're going to get a nice mitered corner fold. Bring it over like this. And just kind of mush it down. Okay, now you might have to put a little bit of more glue in the corners because we're going to bring the rest of it down. And you can never have too much glue. Okay, so now take this side and fold it over. Okay. And you might want to keep a damp cloth nearby. I always forget to do that, so now I got sticky fingers. And then just go over to your next side and do the same thing. Just fold it over. And keep going around till you have all four edges folded over. Now you're going to go to all four corners and you're going to cut at a diagonal. Now don't cut all the way into the corner. You want to stay back just a little bit because you don't want the raw edge around the corner to show on the front side. So just go in like this and cut. And again you want to go to all four corners and do it. Now you're going to fold these edges over. If you need to add more glue you didn't get enough on, then go ahead and put it around there. And now just take these and fold it over. And do it on all four sides. Now you should have enough tacky glue on there now, but if you don't you can always add some more. So now we're going to set it down and take your time and just look over from the top and center it as much as you can. And then press it firmly down. This craft wood piece that I have here, I purchased it at Walmart and it is in the sewing and craft area. Not all Walmarts carry sewing and craft items. You can always go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or even Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Many of them sell wooden pieces similar to this. You may not find this exact one, but you may find something else that you like. What I like about this one is it already has 
two ways of hanging it, either with this rope or it's got a little plastic piece on the back here that you can hang it over a nail. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet, but you have two different ways of hanging it so you can get real creative. What you're going to do is take this, and this time I'm going to use hot glue, and you're going to put it on your frame and then turn it over and center it on this piece. Just to add a little personality to this, I've decided to make a little bow. If you don't know how to make a bow, or maybe you do, you can make any kind of bow you want. A simple bow up to more complicated. If you're interested in learning how to make a bow like this, and I have several other bows you can learn, there will be a video link listed down below in the description description section where you can learn how to make a bow. And I'm just going to put it in the corner. I'm going to put some hot glue on it and just set it right down in there. And then you're all done. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you learned something new. If you're interested in learning more about cross stitch and other projects that you can make with your cross, with your cross stitch kits, there will be links listed below your YouTube screen. There will also be link, links to cross stitch lessons one and two so that you can learn the basics of cross stitch if you don't know anything about it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.